We're here to educate people and to spread the word about plovers. They're so tiny that they can go unnoticed quite frequently. And there are a lot of signs that they give to people that are on the beaches to help reduce disturbance. They know how to protect their young. Um, so we're just here to make their cry a little bit louder. Hi, my name is Lena Ives. I'm from Brooklyn and I go to UConn. I'm a rising senior studying natural resources, wildlife conservation, and I am a seasonal field technician for the Audubon Alliance for Coastal Waterbirds. Putting up an exposure takes, it can take two to four people. It's better the more people that you have. Um, we put up this fencing and we dig a circle around it and put the fencing in the little rivet that we've dug around and um, secure it with posts and zip ties and we run back out of the fence and try and get the bird back in the nest within a 30 minute window to make sure that the nest is still successful. Our birds currently face a lot of disturbance from humans. Um, leash dogs are a big, pretty big problem and foot traffic is also a problem, especially when nests and eggs start to hatch and we have plovers um, walking around with little tiny hatchlings that are about the size of a cotton ball. Um, they're very vulnerable to human traffic and um, the parents are very vocal, so they'll tell you when you're too close. They have a lot of other natural threats that um, include the tidal areas. So when the tides get high like they do on, they did last week on Memorial Day, we lost a ton of nests. The nests get washed out by the tide and they're lost completely. The oyster catchers aren't as protected as piping plovers, but they still see a lot of disturbance and are pretty vulnerable during their nesting period. They nest quite frequently on islands and offshore rocks, which we kayak out to and monitor to make sure that they're nesting successfully. And they also have a lot of trouble with tidal disturbance um, on the beaches. But they are bigger birds and they have larger eggs, so the birds can leave the nest for a little bit longer than piping plovers can. So they're a little bit more um, fit to weather the disturbance that they see. A couple weeks ago we had a really rainy day. My hiking boots were completely filled with water. Um, so on those days we go to beaches where we know we don't have nests or we know we have one nest so we can stay away from it and just not beaches that are trafficked highly by birds. Days with high temperature, we also have to be a little bit more careful about the nests, um, but we also do a lot of um, strenuous activity on those days, putting up exposures, um, because we know that the, bird, the eggs won't go, won't be subject to low temperatures. So we do a lot of um, high intensity work on those days too.